Hey, what's up guys? It's update day today. iOS 12.4 has just been released for all devices currently supporting iOS 12. It's the in-between before iOS 13, but still a very significant upgrade. We'll go ahead and cover everything that's changed in that. There are some very old legacy updates that have been released on the 4S and 5 and iPads, which I'm very surprised to see. It's unlike Apple to do something like this. And you know, after seven grueling betas, this is where we've arrived. Apple wanted to make sure they're leaving off all of the legacy devices, and I wanted to make a throwback to the 5S 6 on iOS 12.4. It's stable, it's fast, and it's leaving off those old devices on a good note. So let's go ahead and cover everything that's changed. Now in the official change log over here, we do have a number of new changes and iPhone migration over here. So just like in iOS 13, Apple has migrated this feature down to iOS 12.4, where you can migrate your iPhone data to a new device through a wireless transfer. Now we saw something about a cable transfer, I guess that isn't gonna happen, not on 12.4 anyways. And basically you'll be able to take all of your data from an old iPhone and over Wi-Fi connect it to a new one. Also, there are a number of new Apple news improvements over here, just the way it works, just some general optimizations there. Also an update with walkie talkie where Apple has re-enabled this feature once again, if you went ahead and updated your Apple watch to watch OS 5.3 and your iPhone on the latest 12.4, closing the loophole where people can listen in. Other than that, behind the scenes, Apple is making changes to the Apple card within wallets. So they're preparing it, letting you get ready for the Apple card whenever it does drop. I'm keeping an eye out for that. I want that titanium beauty in my wallet, but so far we haven't heard anything from Apple on that. It should be fairly soon here, before September I'd expect. Also, there is a HomePod update, iOS 12.4, available for all HomePods, so go ahead and update those in conjunction. There's a Mojave update as well. And the only other animation I can fathom is this one right here, found by a Reddit user. It's a playlist animation in the music application. So after seven betas, we really don't have much, but it is a significant upgrade. It contains some critical security fixes and it'll leave your devices off faster, especially for the legacy ones. Now, besides this, the iPhone 5 and the 4S got a very unconventional update. iOS 10.3.4 for the 5 and the 4S on 9.3.6. Never thought I'd see this day, but it addresses an issue that could impact GPS location performance and could cause system date and time to be incorrect. So definitely a critical one. It doesn't go back to the 4, but the 4S and above, and the old legacy iPads on the same relative firmwares here. Honestly, I like that a lot that Apple continues to support older firmwares even when there is a critical security fix. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run a Geekbench on this as is customary, and I do also want to do a little legacy test here on these devices. Six years on the iPhone 5S of iOS support, and I just wanted to go ahead and do a throwback, compare the speed of it on its first firmware to its latest and last. Now we might see 12.4.1, maybe 12.4.2 if there are some security fixes, but I'm assuming that this is gonna be it for these guys. And it really has got an unprecedented amount of support. If you have an Android, you're likely to get two, maybe three years if your manufacturer is really nice, but Apple has outdone themselves and I'm so proud of the support these guys have gotten. And on the 12R with 12.4, this is the Geekbench, before on 12.3.1, consistent update. Now, stability-wise, it's great. I mean, I've tested many of the betas, not the recent ones, but really nothing to complain about. It's a straightforward upgrade. There's no reason you shouldn't. Now, let's take a look at some of these legacy devices. On the left is an iPhone 6 on iOS 8.3. It did ship with iOS 8 to begin with and 12.4 on the right. So this is five years of software updates. And just a few things I'd like to test, starting with Touch ID. Now, on the left here, with the screen off, one, two, three, Oh, wow, that's uh, considerably faster. With the screen on, one, two, three. Oh, different. And once again, with the screen off, one, two, three. So, okay, this time it's closer. And one thing I can certainly appreciate with the newer firmwares is the animations. I love the way that Apple has improved the animations, the wake up animation, just everything feels nice and bouncier, snappier, I guess you can say. And uh, next up, Geekbench. This one doesn't even run the newer one anymore, but uh, here we go. And wow, look at that. The score did drop by a decent amount here. Although I'd say the trade-off is worth it. More security, better animations. It does feel generally faster. Let's launch a couple apps. One thing's for sure is clearing out the app switcher is uh, less of a pain now. But uh, let's try camera here, one, two. Oh yeah, iOS 12 launched that one faster. Settings, one, two. Not that one. And music, one, two. 
Oh yeah, definitely not as fast on the newer firmware. So there's the iPhone 6. It's been a long journey. I definitely enjoyed this phone, even with its bend gate and all. It's been a fantastic upgrade. I remember actually being very excited about the screen upgrade, so I'll miss it. I mean, I'm glad Apple's still supporting it with some updates. We might still see some in the future here, but it's been a good five years, iPhone 6. In the iPhone 5S series here, Screens are a little dim. We're so spoiled by the newer displays. This was a fantastic phone. This was the first phone that I stood in line for at the Apple store. Sucks that tradition is no longer alive here. But it started on iOS 7, the beginning of the new flat design in iOS, and is ending at or near iOS 12.4. So six years of uninterrupted software updates on a very small display. Just bravo, Apple. You guys did so well here. Now I'd like to show you the Geekbench scores here and they started out fairly strong, started withering away towards the middle here, and regained composure towards the end, but the multi-core score really never did. And this might be because the way of testing has changed over time, but yeah, the score is different now. Now, last thing I'd like to do on all of these is a startup test. Give us an idea of just how long it takes to load iOS, and on the bottom here, uh, the iPhone 6s. Okay, so I'll start with the iPhone 6s. One, two, three. And on the left here is 8.3, on the right 12.4. And I'm gonna go ahead and start all the 5S's in three, two, one. So they're all connected to the same power hub over here. And there they go. So I gotta say, you know, just using the 5S at the very beginning was amazing with Touch ID. I'm glad that the iPhone is returning to it. And uh, over here we can see that iOS 12.4 was faster than 8.3 to begin with. Good stuff, I like that upgrade. And, oh wow, oh wow indeed. iOS 7, then iOS 8, very cool. Then iOS 9, and then iOS 12. Wow, so, hmm, these three were faster than the newer one, but then again, it has more assets to load, it's a much larger firmware, more diverse with animations, it's almost understandable. But iOS 11 on the 5S, I do specifically remember was bad. Apple recouped all their losses over here on iOS 12, so good to see that. Okay, so there's the iPhone 5S, six years. Just wanted to give it a little moment, a little memorial to a device with a beautiful design, beautiful color. It refined what the 5 was, what it did very well, and gave us a powerhouse of a phone. And many people are still using this in many parts of the world, and Apple realizes that. So they, uh, they updated the 5 and the 5S, some great firmwares, let them off on a good note. Okay, folks, so there it is. A very interesting day in the world of iPhone software, some very old legacy devices. We're sending off the iPhone 6 and 5S series, and of course the 6 Plus here. And for all devices on modern firmwares, 12.4 will hold you over until iOS 13, unless you're running the beta already, which I would recommend. It's a great place to be, get familiar with the release before it's out. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll keep you guys updated on everything in between. Peace.